Okay, so let's continue studying how do transformers work. Uh, so in previous video, we went through history of transformers and we saw how everything is actually simple changes, improvements, innovations to two primary architectures only, GPT and BOT. Okay, and uh, as a proof of that, you can go to this website called as Papers with Code. All the research in this field, you can find the papers and their code here in one place. This is an amazing website, just like Hugging Face. So here, if you go into Browse State of Art, you will find everything, every problem you're trying to solve. What is the state of art and, you know, then what, what uh, origin it is based on. So similarly, in the method section, so if you check, scroll down to NLP, Two things, language models and transformers. These two parts have the highest number of papers if you check. Rest are just in thousands, max. So what does it mean? Majority of the problems you will have, the solutions, this solution works for whatever the use case. We just need to scale it. And if you go into language models inside any of these two, you will find inside methods, the methods which are most popular, it's going to be GPT, Transformers, uh, it is going to be BERT, and it is going to be, you know, just that's it, GPT, Transformer, BERT. You will see these everywhere. Okay. So, Transformers, uh, uh, you will find uh, uh, them here and the, their state of art. It, it's all completely focused on Transformers alone. So these two, GPT and BERT. Then these are language models we saw in the previous video wherein we, we take ready-made data, which is very easily available. Text data is easily available. And if we can learn from it, it's, it's, it's the best thing which is possible. So, you know, we take bigger and bigger and bigger data set and we will be able to, uh, as long as we have, you know, more data, there is more intelligence to be extracted from it then we can kind of like save it into a bigger model or we take the same amount of data and keep extracting more and more and more intelligence we can save it in a bigger and bigger and bigger model so that's how transformers are they are language models and because they have this nature which is being rich help more data and more compute if you just throw you can get a lot better uh, 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 result so we keep doing that so these transformers they are big models that's what we saw and exceptions like distilled bird they are very important because this is what role uh, innovation can play distillation is just one of the innovations we you know there can be many right we we just need to invent them uh find them so these are large models, and that's the rule for uh, models. It's like a dick competition of all the companies. Bigger is better. It's it's the thing is why is bigger is better. So you see, it, it, this will show you that you know bigger is better, and just companies are blindly wasting money. No, that's not how it is. When you build a bigger model the capacity of the model expands. That is what was discovered. So a smaller model, 8 billion parameters, it can do language understanding, some arithmetic, some question answering. But if we have a 60 billion parameter thing, now its capacity of question answering, arithmetic and language understanding grows. But so does new types of capacities translation, summarization, and some more reasoning. If you scale even more, even more abilities emerge. That's why bigger is better. As long as you can train a bigger model, you will get a much better or newer abilities. That is what this uh, big models approach goes uh, with. We train a model, we take existing data sets, we train existing models, we fine tune them, refine them, and voila okay so this whole process of building on top of the existing knowledge is transfer learning so if we have an untrained model which has been pre-trained we have an untrained model which which has been pre-trained so why has it been pre-trained so that it learns something 
okay so large data large number of compute we just keep running and big companies can afford it and we take that pre trained model and then fine tune on top of it with much smaller compute this is a spelling mistake here in diagram much smaller compute much smaller uh, data set and you get a much better model also so this is where i stopped yesterday so you no know, just a 5 minute quick uh, detailed uh, overview of what we covered and then let's go uh, continue from there going into general architecture okay so uh, first what is this architecture what does this architecture look like uh, my video capture device is broken so i'm just going to turn it off <clears throat> okay so where is my code the code is like this we have the uh, transformer which is a combination of these two things let me just write the co code here in one place there is a model which is called as encoder and there is a model which is called as decoder okay what does encoder do it takes information now i have if you look at the code the code i have written a tiny bit differently uh, compared to everywhere else i take out features first and in features later why because out features is number of neurons at that layer so uh, and the incoming features to each of the neurons so i think it makes more sense i can visually see oh there are 64 neurons here then 32 then 16 and then 8 so this architecture i can easily see visually i can easily see visually what's happening so it's like if i have let's say 8 then i have this 4 and then i have this 2 so something like this is the architecture uh, which i have written here so total number of neurons are decreasing as we go down and the funny thing is output of a layer with 64 neurons is of 64 dimension if say number of neurons here are 32 its out features are 32 so you see progressively the output size is getting smaller so what is why is it is it is called encoder okay it is called as encoder because it takes in input then convert that input into just a tiny bit smaller but a distilled version so this is what this layer it is converting 100 dimensions to 64 then it is taking those 64 and then again compressing it to 32 then again 32 to 16 and then 16 to 8 so it is progressively distilling imagine we are boiling a milk as a more time passes more denser and denser sweet dessert uh, appears is the same thing information is being distilled into more and more dense patterns okay so if we have a single data point vector of let's say dimension 100 and i take uh, let's say <laughs> 101 uh, points uh I take hundred hundred and one points. Fine, fine. Okay, x points. Then what? I... Oh, yes. Okay, so I take a single data point hundred and I do this thing. What happens is, whatever the layer whose input is let's say hundred and output dimensions I'm expecting to be sixty four. Its output. become 64 input shape was the shape of that this thing and output of this layer if we output of this layer after we pass a single data point to it its shape is 64 the reverse of encoding where in information higher dimension information is being distilled into smaller reverse of that is uh decoding 
and this is what is the quick summary of the architecture encoder and decoder encoding models compress information so here if you compress it's like a longer sentence is compressed and compressed and compressed and its meaning is saved into that compressed format decoder takes in a condensed vector a small vector of numbers and then expands and expands and expands on top of it so this is good for text generation encoding is good for compression uh, so sentence classification so you know reading the entire sentence and saying uh, this sentiment or that sentiment you know it's it's compression like thing or we have encoder decoder wherein we, it's we can do many uh, different kinds of tasks so this is the general architecture okay now this architecture it could have worked even uh, before uh, this next invention called as attention was invented but uh, i am not going to go into detail of this because this is going to take one weeks i think to master so next week i will uh, spend more time on this attention less later but uh, uh, let's go into it detail at that time only okay so the architecture of original transformer it was like a combination of this so again i'm going to skip this attention layers and original architecture because when we read that research paper i'll upload a video on it so skipping this what i'll talk about then is these three points architecture which i told you know from history we know gpt is very important dirt is very important architecture is just skeleton of the model it is a pytorch code or tensorflow code it is a very uh, uh, definition of each layer and everything and in code it is actually quite easy okay we call it model as a statistical model it, it's a lot more uh, commonly used word and architecture is more coding used uh, coding related word but what is important is this word checkpoint so checkpoint is nothing but you know a, a model if we train whatever is snapshot of the learned parameters where the intelligence is stored that checkpoint that is called as checkpoint so snapshot of parameters being learned so you know different models have different checkpoints sometimes people observe different behaviors in those and uh, you know we can just pick and choose accordingly according to what we need generally so we we generally just choose architecture or model and checkpoint can be chosen by default or you know we can study and choose the checkpoint ourselves so this is how transformers work okay then uh, you know in next chapter we'll go into uh, go into these details so now these encoder decoder models these details are very sparse okay so as you can see encoder are uh, based on bird so it it you will notice in this thing it is all bird bird distilled bird electra though that is different <laughs> robert and decoder models are gpt based gpt 1 2 transform excel or something so it's in its concepts they are like this encoder progressively compress information decoder progressively expand information so encoder takes takes a sparse information sentences it con compresses into a lot more dense uh, me meaning wise a representation of that same sentence so this is what encoder decoder thing is and a combination of these two wherein we then solve uh, different problems uh, uh, with uh, first part of the neural network is encoder and then the second part of the neural network is decoder something like this uh, model is equal to nn dot uh, sequential and inside this i say encoder and then i say decode so something like this so here this model has encoder and decoder both. so what does encoder do it compresses into a uh, distilled information it also extract into subsequent features okay so it extracts it into features and then compresses it 
and then we take that compressed thing and decode according to whatever is the task. So this is a very good permutation and combination for transformers. This is a very popular method like I showed, uh, talked about in the previous video. It is foundation for almost all of the innovations um, and uh, uh, everything is based on this. So this is the introduction of transformer models and then in next chapter we'll go into using these models better.